And now uh, the next point which uh, Maharishi has discussed is the way that activity at one level of a mind can give rise to activity at another level of a mind. Uh, actually, um, sorry, there's a complicated, more complex structure here. And it, it is perceived that one bit of wave gives rise to one back bit of activity and another bit of wave gives rise to another bit of activity. That one, Maharishi said that one can see the mechanisms by which one activity at one level produces the activity at the next level. And uh, this can be ex explained in terms of the name form relationship, which uh, I shall be coming to in a moment. However, uh, for the benefit of people who are not in unity consciousness and haven't observed the things that Maharishi is talking about, I think it's <laughs> be quite good to uh, use analogy again. It's something that most people are more familiar with, and that's the way mathematics develop, because I think there's probably uh, a very close connection here between how mathematics uh, is produced by the mind and the way that these vibrations, the uh, words and sentences of the Vedas are generated. And I'm not sure myself how, how much uh, the Vedas are something uh, uh, are something special and how much it depends on the interests of the individual. For example, a mathematician might observe just the subtle effects in the field of mathematics. Uh, anyway, I think this is a thing which must be argued um, in, in the future where, when we have uh, many people who all the different interests who can observe at this level to see what kind of phenomena are observed. But in any case, to get back to the point um, how, how this works in the case of mathematics, uh, in mathematics, one has an edifice of definitions and theorems and so on. And there's a difference in that a definition is essentially a name of an object, whereas a theorem is a true statement. And the way mathematics develops is when one has become familiar with some level of a mind, or in other words, one has understood what a definition means, or one has accepted that a, a theorem is true, one then builds up on that uh, to more complicated ideas. And in some way, the brain, I think, understanding what a definition means and being able to use it in a way that's not purely mechanical, as um, a computer might do, I think must mean in some way that the brain has been tuned to uh, some particular um, vibration corresponding to that, that result. And, it, and therefore, the brain can just cycle automatically through the vibration corresponding to that definition or the theorem, and it can then think ahead to these more complicated levels without having to look back and forth. However, uh, the point is, anyway, that mathematics has a similar sort of structure of levels. We have definitions and theorems, and we build up to something more complicated, and then build up from those. And as far as I understand what Maharishi has said, this is very similar to the way that the earlier verses of the Vedas give rise to later verses of the Vedas. The only difference is that the, the, the Vedas are cognized in detail as actual words, whereas a mathematician normally experiences only ideas which he, later, which he has to connect with his experience. And So the statement here is that one may have a particular word or name recognized as a name rather than just an idea. Well, an idea is probably at a, an earlier stage than the name, in fact. But the idea goes into the name and then into a more complicated form, which is the object named by the name. And in the same way, when we have, a, instead of a, a name but a complete statement in the Vedas, that statement evolves into some expression of the meaning of that statement. So in other words, if these are completely general phenomena, if uh, a, a clear mind is a universal situation independent of the individual, the way these vibrations will develop will be just given by some fundamental physical law. And perhaps sometime these laws will, will be known 
in detail. But in any case, I, I uh, want to use these results to go back to this question of how intelligence might, how, how the mind can, uh, or how, how physics can contain intelligence at a very basic level. Now, I'd like to use this anal analogy with the physical vacuum to explain the point I'm going to make. If we have a physical vacuum, that's to say a medium containing no matter or energy of any kind, if we put energy into it, then we generate particles. And so some particles may be very short-lived, but eventually we'll get some stable particles like photons. And there's a sort of selective system. Uh, there's an evolutionary process which occurs in a physical vacuum in that unstable particles quickly disappear while stable particles are left. And we can consider the way uh, the mind works in the same way. If we start off with uh, a state of least energy, a completely, a completely clear mind, and then if energy is put into it in some way or other, we'll get some transient disturbance. And what will, be, what will be left in the end is a statement, uh, or s um, sorry, we'll, um, we we f uh, go back uh, in a moment. We, we feed energy into this clear state of the mind, and we get some transient activity. And then when it dies down, we'll get a particular kind of activities which are stable and exist for a long period of time without changing their form. And what I'd like to suggest as um, an attractive hypothesis is that these statements which can propagate in the mental vacuum without decaying should be considered as true statements. Um, it's obviously a connection between truth and permanence here. And so if we look at a mind which is containing could repeat this sentence, what he says, a very beautiful sentence. Uh, mm, that will establish the authenticity of the Vedas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if one puts uh, energy uh, into the mind, then after the initial disturbance has died away, there will be left particular kinds of activities which don't, don't change their form with time, and I'm suggesting that uh, this should be considered almost a definition of truth, that the, the definition of truth, yes, <laughs> they don't change. The weather, the meaning doesn't change, the expression doesn't change, because they are the fluctuations of consciousness, and it is this that brings it authenticity. It's a very great truth. Hmm? 